Good afternoon, kids. Got caught up in some paperwork. Who the heck uses paper anymore? <laughs> I said I was going to be through with that thing behind us, and we were going to start it today. Not quite, but the repaired oil pan is here. So guess what I'm working on once we finish this little live chat? I'm going to wrap that thing up and start it up. Who knows, I may record it first start. Not that I'm nervous about it or anything. <laughs> yeah, that one's uh, pushed my limits as far as <sighs> complexity of valve timing, adjustable valve timing, that one. Yeah, <laughs> you better be right when you're putting that thing back together. I better be right. But let's swing around and look at any questions that I said I was going to research to. Oops, yeah. I have access to dealership level information, top secret stuff. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, I, I get it. Shh, be quiet. How about I mute you there? My team's still sending me messages. Well, or maybe I'm part of their team. I don't know. Depends on how you want to look at it. Let's see. Bull Nape America had asked me about his R1. Um, what he was he was wondering about was the uh, his machine. I believe it was chopping off at throttle, and I told him to check his throttle position sensor. And I was kind of um, guessing on the wires, so let's be exact. And it actually you're going to be measuring a voltage when you do this. And it's a three pin conductor and you're going in between the center pin and what I would consider pin number one. Oh, actually the center pin and pin number two. And the center pin is yellow and the outside pin that we're interested in is the black with the blue stripe. Now the other pin is uh, uh, just a, a blue one. So you want to make sure you get the black one with the blue stripe on it. And what you're looking for with the machine turned on, throttle closed, is a voltage somewhere in between 0.63 and 0.73 volts. And that's measured volts DC. And if it's just not within that range, there's a, I believe it's a Torx or either a, a three millimeter Allen. There's two of them. You want to loosen up both of them and rotate it one way or another till it comes into that range of voltage. and See if that takes care of your problem. All right. I think that was the only one I was missing, or the one I had to research, the only one I did research for this week. So let's see what else I may have missed. James had asked me, hi, I've got a 2005 Suzuki Boulevard C50, but when I put it in gear, it doesn't move. The clutch just raises, raises, but no movement. Please help me with amending that problem. All right, when you say raises, I assume you mean the engine just races. So it sounds like your clutch is uh, kaput. And I would not recommend running it anymore as all those fiber discs have broken down and now they're circulating in the oil, which circulates through the entire engine. And that's usually not a, 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 a very good thing. So the only other long shot could be is if your a clutch was just improperly adjusted. I mean, is there any play on it before uh, before it comes to full stop. Highly unlikely, but hey, let's trace down the uh, the simple things first. But even if it is just way out of adjustment, it's probably damaged at, at this point because uh, when you pull it just a little bit in and it's still making frit or still making contacts, building up a lot of heat and breaking down those aforementioned fiber discs. So more than likely, you're going to need to do a clutch on this one. Not that tough to do. I, I don't think we have a video doing a C50, but uh, we have several clutch videos that can walk you through the process of at least the uh, the steps required to replace the clutch, even though it is not going to be unit specific. But uh, if that's still making you a little bit nervous, just do like I do before I start every single project and get a service manual. We do sell those online and just follow along because... Honestly, guys, that's what I do because, uh, and I know a, a pretty, a fair amount about engines in general, hopefully enough on that one, 
that's nobody knows at all. Nobody can know all the specs, all the uh, the different um, torque values, and you know, all the different measurements. It's just impossible unless you're Sheldon Cooper or something like that. And I don't want to be him. <laughs> all right, Blazing Chips had asked me, rebuilt the top end of my 01 TRX 350. Very familiar with that one. And it is running rich to the point of a new spark plug being completely black after only running running a few minutes. Any advice? Wow. Rebuilding the top end should not change your air fuel ratio going to your spark plug or inside of the cylinder. And because what you're describing is a really a, a rich running condition. And that tells me your carburetor has to be out of whack somehow or another. I'm not sure where it got changed. But um, just doing the top end should have uh, little or no um, effect on what the air fuel ratio is if you went back to the stock specifications. So I'd say let's open up that carb, make sure that needle's in the same stock position, and then your air fuel screw is, you can start out at a one and three quarters out. So you bottom it all the way down, bring it back one and three quarters, and I believe that's the Honda stock position. If it's still not running right, you may want to come out to two full turns out see if that gets it running in the right condition all right let's keep the earth green okay my fuel pump on my gsxr primes and works fine until i turn the bike off hmm. then it won't restart i've narrowed down to a hot start issue if it doesn't prime at all when too hot any ideas huh do we have a video on that i believe we do memory serves i addressed this on our 07 jixer 1000 let's see if that if i can bring it up yep i actually did one on the the jixer 1000 so if you go to our our page our main uh youtube page and then look under the playlist for the g the suzuki gsxr 1000 I can walk you through the steps that I went through to um, see what was going on with ours. On ours, it seemed to be a, um, a, a filter that needed to be replaced. Yours may be a hot start issue. I don't know. It may be something simpler like I dealt with. So take a look at that and then let us know. Let's see what all questions, if we've got any, have started to pile up. Uh, we got a few. Christopher Rhodes, do you think not heat wrapping my header, uh, header will allow radiant heat enough for my machine to get hotter faster? Huh. Were you trying to get more heat into it, Christopher? Because usually heat is the, uh, it's the power sucker. And that's the one we're trying to get it away from the engine as quickly as possible. And the reason that you would wrap a header is to hold that heat inside of the header and send it back instead of letting it radiate out. Now, it's kind of a double-edged sword because X amount of heat can be dispelled as, you know, just in that distance of the header itself. And you're holding that in and making it go back to the, uh, to your, your muffler. And hence you're going to you know, go through your, your packing a lot faster because it's going to be hotter back there. Most people that heat uh, that, that would wrap their headers most of them are in the uh, the drag world they um because they're not running the machines that long and that, that's just a few seconds as you're doing a burnout then you're down the quarter or eighth mile or whatever it is so it really doesn't matter if you're running your machine you know all day long i probably wouldn't wrap the headers on it because i think it needs to expel the heat just as much as possible now if there's a part of your engine I remember some of the old Fiat designs where you had the exhaust going down and the intake coming up, and that was on the same side of the head. Well, yeah, that's absolutely insane. But hey, this was Fiat in 1974. Ask me how I know about that. And so I had to, I pretty much had to wrap the headers because it was trying to boil the carburetors when it would sit still or the boil the fuel in the carburetors and uh, ended up with a vapor lock. Long story there or another story for another time, maybe. But I would probably shy away from it. Um, and I would, it'll get hot, just, it'll get hot on it on its own, 
on scale. So I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't try to hold the heat in. And that's what you would essentially be doing. ATV doctor, what's up, JT? It is another fantastic Friday here. So life is good, man. Life is good. Josh is sending me a question. Hey, John, I've got a customer with a 2022 KX450. Wow, brand new. Says after an hour of riding, his fuel pump doesn't kick back on. Let it cool down and fires right up. Ideas. I haven't slung a uh, leg over a motocross bike in a long time. It's certainly not anything as new as a uh, 22450. And being that new, I wonder if that may be a, a factory defect because you shouldn't have to just wait for it to cool back down to start back up. So that makes me wonder if there's something uh, something going on with that particular model. If we would, let me uh, make a note of that, and uh, I'll check the, the Kawasaki site and see if I can find anything on, on your particular uh, particular problem. Does that sound like a deal? Karen Lynn, I have a... Uh, all right. Y'all quit. I don't shut Skype off. Y'all are driving me crazy. Stop. Karen Lynn, I have a 2008 Toyota Tacoma. Okay. <laughs> Pretty sure I smell bowl of burning oil when I drive it. Any easier than rings, uh, hopefully. Um, okay. Don't immediately, you just smell burning oil. So that tells me that's probably coming out under the engine bay. Chances are 2008. It's got a few miles on it, I would bet. I would look at your valve cover gaskets and see if they're leaking. That car right there did the same thing to me. Smelled, was it burning oil? Nope. Leaking all over. A little too close to those exhaust headers. And then that's where you smell it. So I'd say take a look at your engine. The valve covers, the valve cover gaskets themselves. They're going to be rubber. And uh, see if I'm right. Uh, jibber, 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 jibber. Christopher is coming back at me. He's been trying to silence some of this diesel pop, but I've noticed it does less in dirt than hard service. Any idea of why? Huh. I don't, I, I don't get that one, Chris. I mean, I really don't. And not unless if you're on a hard surface, it's maybe running through the RPM range a little bit easier so it's not quite as stressed it's actually just spinning the tires on a uh, on a hard surface so putting more load on the engine could that could could that induce a little bit more popping on diesel i guess well, that's, I, i've never noticed that before but uh, i could see it Ooh, quit moving around and he also said and yes you guessed it um uh, Will wrapping the hoss, uh, exhaust help with this? I heard this helps the hot gases escape the pipe. As I said before, it, it, if anything, it just holds them in and spits them out further down, uh, the, the heat itself. So I, I kind of would think it may make it worse. Europe has asked me how to do job with your company. Um, if you're interested in, in applying for a... Uh, a job with Partzilla, the Outdoor Network. Go uh, do a computer or do a uh, internet search for Outdoor Network. You'll go to a main landing play page there, and then uh, you can do a search for uh, you know for jobs. So there's a uh, a subsection for that where you can see all available positions that we have open throughout the company. That includes uh, the Boats.net, Partzilla, and any. Uh, in the uh, dealers, uh, dealer, dealerships that we are, are currently uh, operating at the time. So go take a peek. Christopher Rhodes, 05450 header bolt spec. I'm not going to remember that off the top of my head, <laughs> but I will look it up for you. How's that, Chris? <laughs> uh, no, trying to keep it cool. If you're talking about the area around it, then yes, it will hold the heat in. Mercedes 101 has asked me, 2013 Yamaha Grizzly 300. When I started the AT, uh, when I started, the, AT, the ATV, the temperature light used to come on and, and off. It doesn't do that anymore. Is that a problem? 
I've checked the I've checked the wires and the bulb is good. Hmm. That is the uh, I'm trying to remember on that on that circuit if that is just a um, a thermistor that's letting that switch or that light go on and off, or if that is coming from the uh, the ECU. It's been a little while. I said that Grizzly 300, if I remember correctly, that was uh, that was an outsourced machine, was it not? Or maybe I'm thinking of the Kawasaki. At any rate, um, look in your in your owner's manual and see what the uh, parameters are for it turning on and off, and then uh, get back with me on it, Mercedes, and uh, we'll get it figured out. As long as it's your temperature light and not your oil light. Temperature light, okay. Well, it needs to work, especially if it's overheating. But um, as long as it's not your oil light that you're, uh, you're, you're talking about, which if it comes on, you've got bigger problems to deal with. Oh, hand and fly, the legend himself. Oh, hardly. <laughs> John Taylor, you have the, taught, me in a, an, an, taught me an enormous amount of what I know. I sincerely appreciate you. Well, thank you. Um, I enjoy doing this job, and I've said it many, many times. I mean, I'm just a uh, mechanic with a camera, but uh, having an interaction with all of you makes it fun. Chris, <sighs> Christopher Rhodes. No, I wasn't, I wasn't sighing at you. I'm getting message after message, and it, it's covering up part of uh, the, the chat, <laughs> and I keep closing them. My staff is on a war path. Uh, uh, oh, 20, really guys, 23? We're just going to shut y'all down. But now they can't communicate me with me on the other chat. But hey, we're not, we'll just fly alone. How's that? <laughs> Christopher Rose, matching get hot quick, especially during low mile per hour, mile per hour trail riding would be like to ride a lot longer without it getting too hot. I'm guessing an oversized radiator, a radiator, anything else? Well, yeah, you could go with a, long, a larger radiator. Um, but if you're concerned about getting as much heat out as possible, you may want to consider a manual override on your uh, your your fan for uh, in front of the, or right on the inside of the radiator. Good grief! There's no way to shut y'all down. End Skype. But um, yeah, I, I would say go with an, an an override on your fan to where you can cut it on yourself. Now you don't want to disable the automatic feature when it hits a certain temp; it turns the fan on. But it would just have an override to where you could you could physically hit the switch and have it run continuously. You follow me? All right, uh, Leonard Pace. Evidently, uh, I skipped over my post above. Question about no noise on a re rebuilt Grizzly 660. Uh, where are you? Huh? I, I don't see you in the. Uh... I don't see you up there, Leonard. Um, what was your question? Uh, can you repeat or repeat it one more time? Because I, I don't see it in the chat. Dewey's Garage had asked me, thanks for the helical versus time cert video. Well, thanks. Uh, we just posted that one and uh, it's, it's trending quite well for us. I mean, uh, it's not like I'm doing up media, media and we'll have 10 million views on it. <laughs> Probably not. But uh, yeah, it seems to be doing seems to be doing uh, quite well. I could have expanded and gone into a couple of different time or thread restoration or replacement um, ones, but most people either, they know time cert or they know um, helical. And those are the ones that are readily available out there. But I just wish that we sold the, uh, the time cert on uh, Partzilla because uh, it is my go-to, well, case in point, that's one in there. <laughs> After this got welded up, went ahead and put a time cert in it. So obviously, if I'm going to trust it on that, I must believe in it. <laughs> oh, Christopher Rhodes. Oh, oh uh, back to the drawing board. Hope you got that Hispanic 
pun on the last question. Thanks, John. Um, did I miss that? I probably did. <laughs> All right. Phil Boudreau. Okay. I need to find a small leak on my 07 1800cc Honda Goldwing. I've already tackled the air cleaner thanks to your video. Wow, Honda. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> you, uh, you, ought, you ought to see the next one that, uh, that we're going to record is doing a valve adjustment on it. Which shouldn't be that tough of a thing, right? You wouldn't believe the special tools you have to use to uh, open up the, the, uh, the, the tensioner for, for the timing chain. Because that has to be taken out of the equation when you're going to uh, check it. And because this our particular bike has ABS, it it's almost impossible to get to because the pump is right over that uh, that right bank, uh, and that is exactly where that particular um, chain tensioner is. Now the one on the left side where your your shifter is, <laughs> piece of cake. It's a mirror image, so it's down on the bottom. Whereas the other one's up at the top. It's going to be tough. <laughs> Um, Phil, then he said, uh, do you have any videos on removing the upper fairing so I can check the connections on both radiators? I can smell the engine Ooh, coolant when I ride, but nothing drips onto the floor. I can't remember if we had to take the upper fairing all the way off, but the one that I did do that where we had to dig in the deepest is when we replaced the, uh, the steering stem bearing. So see if that one goes deep enough. Uh, for some reason, I, I think we left the, uh, the the outer fairings, and I'm pretty sure that's what you're talking about. I think we left those on. But as far as checking them, you should be able to pull the inner inner desk, or what do they call it, shelf. Um, pull the, just the inner shelf, and you should be looking right down on top of the radiators. And that's, I don't think you can get all the way around it, but uh, it should at least get you pointed in the right direction. He says, it is part. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> John Stevens, my Raptor 660 seems a little noisy. I think it's the valve train. Do you think I need a valve adjustment or is a little noise, noise normal? Uh, that's, that's a little bit of a loaded question because I can't hear what you're hearing right now. But the 660 is pretty easy to adjust. It's not that tough to get to. You've got those access plates. Just make sure you've got a decent set of feeler gauges to get in there. And also Motion Pro makes a really cool valve adjustment wrench. It allows you to hold the tightening nut still and then get in there and adjust the, uh, the adjustment screw and then hold it and then pinch it off. Uh, that way it'll hold it in place. A lot easier trying to do it with, you know, a box end wrench and a, uh, you know, a screwdriver. So something you may want to think about if you're, you're going to go jump in there and do that. I hope y'all are having fun on Skype chat. Y'all are driving me nuts. Nothing to do with you fine people. It's just the, the other people I work with. <laughs> All right. Linder Pace. Sure. Valve timing, chain noise at high RPM load. Idles quiet and smooth. Normal for these engine or stretch chain. All right. And that was... Okay, Leonard, that was on your uh, on your 660. Are you sure? We just talked about um, adjusting the valve clearance. Are you sure that you've got your, your valve clearance set correctly? And then second is your um, timing chain adjuster. Is it still in good shape? Uh, I believe on that one it's an incremental... Uh, it'll, it's kind of like a cam on a set of uh, a row of gears. And that way, when it goes into position, it holds it there. You can't push it back in. But eventually, it's going to extend as far as it can. And then that would uh, tell you that, all right, it's gone as far as it could. And that would indicate that your chain is stretched. Now, I can't remember on the 660 if that requires splitting cases, but... Um, if it, uh, you're telling me it is a 660, that tells me that it is pretty old and you probably do have a few miles on it. So check your tensional first, make sure that it is, uh, it is able to extend all the way. And if it has extended all the way, then it may be time for a chain. Uh, although when you pull the, uh, the, uh, the adjuster itself, if it's 
constructed the way I think it is or the way I remember it being, as it is on most of the other Yamahas. When you pull it out, it's going to extend all the way. So that won't tell you where it was in its, in its travel. So what's the best way to determine that? Maybe just to pull the uh, the valve cover, take a look down in there. You should be able to see the, uh, the the timing chain and hence that guide that the tensioner is pushing on and see if it's got a bunch of slop in it. That would probably be the way I would determine if uh, my chain was completely stretched out and or if the uh, adjuster need to be replaced. Mike is throwing a question. Hey, John, I've got an 08 750 GSXR. Same setup for years. Randomly, my MPG went to hell. 105-ish down to 85-ish. Looks perfect. Not running rich. No oil leaks or visual issues. Valves or what? If it flipped your mileage that fast... And the 08, that was an FI model, if I remember correctly. It was not carbureted that, uh, that late in the game. That tells me that it is probably running, the, the ECU is running in what I would consider an alpha mode. And when it does that, it has not been getting a signal from your, your O2, so it doesn't know what to do. So it's going to run safely. And by when I say safely, it's going to make it run rich because you'd much rather um, foul out a couple of spark plugs than run lean and hold a piston, or uh, at the very least burn an electrode off the end of your uh, your spark plug. So I, I would look to see if one, I'd be curious if, if it hasn't thrown an FI code and you just can't read it yet, um, but I, I would be surprised that it doesn't have an FI light on the display right now. And I would take a look at my O2 sensor and maybe, uh, maybe that needs to be replaced. But for it just to make a decision like that and change your mileage, no. Uh, you are saying the plugs look perfect as I'm not running rich, no leaks, no visible issues. Uh, I'm still going to say uh, O2, and I'd be a little bit... It's running. It's probably running rich, but not enough for you to, to see it on the plugs, maybe. So I'm going to stick with my original answer and go with the O2 sensor first. Uh, Mike also said, because the plug's being clean, it's not looking combustion related. PC3, not much fuel added, the same map for year. Oh, uh, you've got one of the controller threes on it. <sighs> you didn't tell me that. It, it could be throwing, it's running the same map, but it's still relying on the engine to get it, give it information from the O2 sensor and then adjust against that. I'm going to, Mike, I'm going to stick with my original answer. <laughs> and I didn't even have to call out for a friend. Um, I would be very interested to see uh, where this one goes. So uh, keep us informed. And I may do a little bit more research on my end, see what would cause a Jixer and 08 to, uh, to flip that quickly. Well, all right, guys. Yep, and he said it is fuel injected. No codes, clean plugs. I swapped them for new ones. Has a fuel system and a power command, power commander three and a and a filter. But then you've had the the same exact setup. All right. Well, I still say it's gonna it's getting faulty information from your uh, from Rio two because that's the only thing I can think of that would make it switch over like that. But let's see. Let's see where we end up on this one. <sighs> turns out I'm right. Yeah, well, good for me. If it turns out I'm wrong, well, then I owe you a uh, partzilla hat. How's that? <laughs> yeah, we'll start that as a maybe a contest each week. Ah, prove John wrong. Win a free hat. <laughs> as long as it doesn't turn into a South Park episode. All right, guys, it is 3.30 by my computer clock. I'm about to change shirts and get to work on that beast behind me. I think I may I'll keep going till it's finished up. If it starts and runs right, drive it home tonight. How does that work? All right, guys, everybody, thanks for spending a little bit of time with us. Thanks for shopping with us here at partzilla.com. Because it makes all of this possible, keeps me employed, 
and then I'm able to converse with you fine people. But once again, thanks everybody. And next week, next week, um, I'm heading back to the track again. I'm feeling kind of itchy. So we're heading back to Barber. So I will end up either transmitting from the road or if I'm already at the track, who knows, I may run into the museum again and do it from there. But at any rate, um, we will, I will transmit to y'all one way or another next Friday at three. Everybody have a great weekend, a great week, and God willing, we will see you next Friday.